Good evening guys, Blackie for Shaman's Forge Bushcraft. Actually, good morning guys, it's 1.20 a.m. Blackie's up kind of late tonight, been doing some stuff and some night navigation and stuff. Anyway, what I'd like to do in this video is I had a uh, student of mine was looking at one of my earlier videos, one of my very first videos that was called Fire Straws and How to Make It. And she kind of made me laugh. She said it was so crude she didn't want to take it seriously at the beginning. Well, she has a point. I made that video over nearly two years ago when I really didn't know what I was doing with all this. So that's what this video is going to be. I'm going to do an update and add a couple extra tips and tricks to it to show you how I make fire straws now and how little advances I've come up with them and uses for them. So stay with me. Let me turn the camera down and show you what I got to do. Plus, as I've said in another video, this is a new camera. So bear with me, guys. I'm learning a new camera. Stay with me. I'll be right back. Okay, guys. Here's what you need to create a fire straw. Now, a fire straw, if you don't know, is a fire lighting aid. It's an improvised tinder that catches a spark and will therefore be used when wet conditions are prevalent, etc. What you're going to need for this is some drinking straws. I prefer McDonald's straws because they're a little bigger in diameter than the standard drinking straw. You're going to need some sort of rammer that will fit inside the drinking straw, naturally. You're going to need cotton. Some people say dryer lint, but let me say this. Dryer lint has the disadvantage of there are so many synthetic fibers now in people's clothing and stuff that it has a tendency not to be flammable like cotton. Now, if you use a great deal of cotton sheets, blankets, cotton clothing, yes, your dryer lint will probably be that way. I do. But a lot of people use so many synthetics, the dryer lint is composed of synthetic fibers and doesn't want to burn. So, test it ahead of time. Cotton balls are very cheap, so, you know. You can also use raw cotton if you don't want to use cotton balls, whatever. You're going to need a pair of scissors. You're going to need some sort of gelled uh, fuel of some form. Now, petroleum jelly or this Murray's beeswax works well. You're looking at something that is, is uh, gelled, thick, waxy, is not going to melt in standard car heat, yet is useful. Now, both the Murray's and the petroleum jelly, sometimes called Vaseline, there's several names for this, have other uses, and we'll get to that in a minute, but... Before you trust this, test it. Take a piece of cotton ball, rub it around the stuff, fray it out, and try a spark and see if it'll work. If it does not work reliably, don't make up a bunch of these straws with it. Find some device. I've heard there's a type of gelled alcohol that can be used. I have not seen that yet. For years, I've always used petroleum jelly. Here recently, I started using the Murray's Beeswax. It's got some advantages, too. Now, for my, it, you can make them with just these components. For a little more advanced, you're going to need one of the magnesium fire starters, a file, and something to catch shavings on. Okay, now, here's how we're going to start. First thing you're going to do is you're going to take your straw, and off the end you're going to cut about a half inch long piece. Then you're going to cut another half inch long piece. It ain't got to be exact, you know, but these are going to be little caps. Now, take your drinking straw and you want to squeeze the end flat and then fold it in half, like that. And then you're going to take that and fold it over again, okay? Now, take your cap and put it over that end. Now, what this does, it seals all off the straw. Don't be too stingy. Go ahead and get a pretty good end on it and push it down the butts in. Now that end of the straw is capped off. Now, we're going to make up our component to go in there, which is going to be our gel, Vaseline, whatever. Now, for making it with just Vaseline, I like to take Vaseline or Murray's and I take the spoon and I take the back of the spoon, put it down in there, and whatever comes off on it is about the right amount for me to coat a cotton ball with. One, maybe one and a half trips. 
You do not want the cotton ball absolutely soaked, but you want it treated well. And then you're going to take this, tear it up, and mush it together, squeezing it. Make it work all the way through those fibers. Because the object of the game here is that the cotton needs to be able to fray up like this so it catches a spark. An untreated cotton ball, on average of my experimentation, will burn about 10 seconds after catching a spark before it extinguishes itself or uses it up, you know. If you treat it with Vaseline, it can burn two or three minutes, depending on how much Vaseline is incorporated. Now, this one was a little dry, didn't get quite enough. You want a consistency of where it's sticky, but you still see a lot of dry fibers. You don't want it, you know, totally wet, because then it's kind of hard to get it to catch the spark. Okay? Now, tearing this apart into a small component, take between your finger and roll it, you make a little wad like that. And then you're going to stick that down the tube. Take your little rammer, shove it down. Do the whole cotton ball this way. Try to do this as fast as possible. I know it's riveting television. It doesn't take long to make them. And where these are advantage is Carrying just the Vaseline and cotton balls is very effective, but it has the disadvantage on Vaseline gets all over everything. You know, when it gets hot, it wants to weep a little bit, or it wants to, you know, just get all over everything. And I prefer not to have my other stuff coated with it. I had a problem at one point where I had to have a device work one time, and it had got Vaseline on it, and I had a heck of a time getting it to work because it was so slick. Now, you can get the whole cotton ball packed in there. And you can put two cotton balls, just make a big straw if you want to. And we'll get into that in a second. Now, we've got the whole thing in there. You want to push it all the way down and, and compress it. Not life and death, but really firm. Now, holding it up to light source, you can see where it stopped. Go about three quarters of an inch above it. Pinch it, cut it off. Now take that end, one more good shuffer measure, pinch it flat, fold it over, squeeze it in half like you did the other end. Take that cap you made and slide over. That's it. Now, this is relatively clean. I can put that in my pack. That's a whole cotton ball ready to go. The, uh, on a lot of the compass pouches, there's that little water purification pouch. I put these in there. I carry six or seven of these in my tender kit because this will work when it's wet. By sealing it up this way, I can drop it in water for a minute or two and bring it out, and the center, two-thirds of it, will remain dry if any gets in around this. Of course, I wouldn't put it on the bottom of the lake for a week and trust it, but you get my point. For casual dunking or you fell in the stream, it's fine. Now, to use it, you just take your knife, split it, bust it, fray out the fibers, strike it with a ferro rod, touch a lighter to it, and it goes. Now, the little tip or trick is, if you will take a file and your magnesium bar and sit there and generate some dust, like this. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm looking for a pile of dust roughly the size of like an English pea. And I like a little piece of cardboard for this or a piece of paper or something that when I fold it up, the stuff flows to a central point like that. Now I'm getting a pretty good bit of powder there. But this just, you know, quite easily, it's soft metal. Frays up. Okay, there's plenty. Now that, I'm sure you can't see it. It's ended up being a little bitty wad of the silver powder, about, you know, half the size of a pea right now. I'm not going to go the full length because I'm trying to do this quickly for you. Hope you can see that. But, it's a little wad of it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my spoon, I'm going to get a good bit of Vaseline on the back of it, and then I'm going to get that powder. 
Now I've got magnesium dust mixed in with my Vaseline. I take my cotton ball, spray it up, and get all that in there. Now I've added magnesium powder to it. This makes for a fire straw that burns even hotter under wet conditions. And varying the amount of magnesium dust will increase the temperature of it. Now you remember how hot magnesium burns, several thousand degrees. By mixing it into here, I get a slightly faster burning and much hotter burning fire straw. And that's where you can play around with this and find your particular needs. Now you'd load it exactly the same way as before. Now, let me grab a rag and wipe my fingers. All right, uses for the fire straw. The obvious, split it with your knife or whatever. Let me grab a knife and I'll show you. Always have that handy dandy Swiss Army knife handy. Take it, punch into it, like that. Open it up, like that. Fray it out just a little bit. Now I can sit and Pull these fibers out till I've got a pretty good little beard sticking out here. You can see that, but I do that all the way and make a nice bigger. Now when I hit it with a spark, chick, it lights. Now, uses for this. Obviously as a fire starter. It will burn the, the plastic burns, all of it burns up. So I can get my fire uh, ready, fray this out, hit it, I'm guaranteed I got dry burnable tinder right there. It'll ignite and it'll make about a two to three inch high flame coming off of it that will burn somewhere around eight to ten minutes on most of the ones I make. With the magnesium in it, I'll get it to burn possibly a minute or two less, but it's definitely hotter depending on how much magnesium powder I put into it. In really wet conditions where the moisture of the air will dampen it down, this is an advantage. Now, other uses for this. Two of these placed up under a canteen cup will heat up a canteen cup to hot coffee status. One of these, you take a stick, split the end of the stick, stick in the ground, split the end of the stick, and put the fire straw in it like that, take the cap off the top for it and set it to fire, and it'll burn like a candle for about 10 or 12 minutes. One of these long ones like this will burn about 20 minutes. Also, if you don't put the magnesium in there, this is petroleum jelly accessible. So if you've got chafing, you know, lips, your nose is chafing, you need a little bit of lubricant for something, on the top of a hand drill for a, a uh, fire kit, a little bit of Vaseline up there to make it slide easier. If you need a lubricant in the field, you know, to grease up your blades or something like that and prevent rust, you've got it right here. So it's multitasking. I can use this to heat up my food, I can use it to light my camp. I can use it to start a fire in wet conditions. I can use it as a dressing to treat and cover dry wounds, itches, irritations, stuff like that. And I can use it as a dressing onto my tools and equipment. All of that from a simple little thing that I can carry a dozen of them in a small little space. Quick, easy, efficient, and cheap. Okay, stay with me and let me turn the camera back. I'll be right back with you guys. Okay guys, here is a better view of a frayed out fire straw because I realized when I looked at the video you couldn't see it that well but all I've done is I have frayed it out pulled a piece out from the inside frayed it up big and left a beard to connect it that all came out of that straw now I've got a tender that will easily catch a spark and ignite and that's what I'm going to try to do for you right now now let's see if I can keep them screwing this up Aha! I can learn a little. Good. Alright, one other thing I wanted to clear up. Give me one second and let me show you. Okay, it's this. I wanted to give you a better close-up of how to close off the straw. So we're going to pretend that this is the straw that you've packed into. 
you've cut the end off chick and now what you're going to do is you're going to squeeze it flat fold it over and then you're going to do this now you slide the cap on again you got the, the straw itself it's full up you've made yourself a good gap where you can do this without binding up push it flat fold the end over and then fold the end like that and that's where you slide your cap onto okay now making sure we're in focus yes do not try this at home kitties Blackie is a trained professional and he has fire prevention equipment handy now all you got to do is put a spark to it and there it goes it ignites spreads throughout the gel Vaseline etc and ignites the little dances of sparks you see are the magnesium in it which adds sparkers to bring up the heat more and more see now the whole straw will catch spread out and it will burn for several minutes just like this no fuss no muss two to three inches of flame coming off of it fairly wind resistant And that's what those magnesiums give you. A little extra time. Okay, guys. Let me put this out, and we'll close everything up. Stay with me. Okay, guys. That's it. That's my take on the fire straw. I don't remember exactly where. Um, it's been, hell, 20 years, maybe more, when I learned about these things. And they've been a real help to me. They're small, they're compact. Carrying the Vaseline like this for chap lips, a bad scratch, it's dry and irritating, having it to heat up chow, start fires, keep rust off of guns and, and knives and axes and things like that. It's just been a real handy multitasker to have in my pack. And that was one of the reasons, it was one of my first videos. It was because I felt it was a really useful piece of field kit that the common man can use and make. They're cheap, they cost dang near nothing. And it's something that's reliable and has served me very well. Now, I can't say I've ever tried them in Arctic conditions or something like that. The coldest I've ever used them was probably in the low teens. But they work. They work very reliably. Of course, they'll ignite with a lighter or something like that. I haven't tried a magnifying glass, but I'm sure it is possible with proper technique. They're just a good, solid piece of, you know, kit. I really appreciate making videos for you guys, and I really do appreciate your comments and your suggestions and things like that. I'm going to take down my old original fire straw video in a couple of days and just replace it with this one. Hopefully this is a lot better video and will make sense. I know it's kind of dark, but I'm having to film at night, and I'm doing the best I can. I appreciate, guys, really do, all your comments, your support, and, you know, I really do. I'm Blackie for Shaman's Forge Bushcraft, wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.